major sponsors for Ableton On Air are Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, a la Israel. Additional sponsors include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Park Chester Times, Muslim Community Report, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene is off today on this um, informative historical edition of Abled and On Air, we will focus on on the the history of John F., of President John F. Kennedy and his work, as well as the the Depression era of Robert Moses's work and uh, Fiorello Laguardia uh, and um, the big snafus that happened during the Depression era and um, the building of New York City. Uh, before we get to our guest, uh, who is on the phone, uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, sponsors, Washington County Mental Health and Green Mountain Support Services, as well as many other sponsors. And we have some important information for you at the end of this program um, about um, Orca Media's um, move to the College of Fine Arts in Montpelier, but that's a little bit later in the program. Right now, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Andrew Burson, former employee of the New York City Housing Authority and uh, advocate for, um, for history for people with special needs uh, on the show uh, who lives in Manhattan. Thank you, um, Andy, for joining me on this edition of Able Then On Air. Thank you, Andy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shiloh. Thank you. Okay. Friends at Orca Media. Okay. And can you, since, uh, let's go into the work of Robert Moses and John F. Kennedy. Um, this is an election year. Uh, there was a lot of things that happened politically during the Great Depression and uh, going forth also into the 60s later on. Um, so why don't we start with Robert Moses and his work, um, he tried to run for governor of New York State. That didn't work. And then he, but he was a uh, a builder, um, extraordinary, a mover and shaker, a builder, mover, and shaker of the 20th century. So why don't we talk about his work? Go ahead. Well, Robert Moses built. He, he built uh, play, he built part of the uh, he built part of the uh, New York City Housing Authority. Yeah, he built part of the New York City Housing Authority. He also built uh, Lincoln part of Lincoln Center and Fordham University, mm -hmm. which is right next door to each other. Now there is a Fordham University of the Bronx, and there's also uh, Fordham Manhattan. University Fordham. of Manhattan. Manhattan. Okay, so but what? What exactly was the political um, problem, um, you know, because being a modern builder in the 20th century, you know, uh, I mean, let alone uh, the Industrial Revolution, but also the, the 20th century, Moses, uh, Robert Moses, not Moses, <laughs> but, oh. but Robert Moses, um, Holy Moses. <laughs> no, not Moses, Moses. But R Robert Moses um, had some problems that he was trying to figure out with um, the millions and millions of cars that were trying to go across New York City, and there was um, issues with that. Um, can, can you explain the building of bridges and so on? I can explain to it from housing for veterans. Okay, go ahead. Maybe. Janie and Johnny came marching home in 19, December of 1945. Mm -hmm. 
Some of you will remember that the Japanese had surrendered four months earlier, mm -hmm. bringing World War II to a close. Okay. Some you'll find that that date remains, reminds them of the nickel subway ride okay. and of Ebbets Field over in Flatbush. All right. Where the Dodgers were building a National Power League pow uh, powerhouse. Okay. Edmund Borgia Butler was chairman of the Housing Authority at the time. Mm -hmm. And William O'Dwyer was mayor, was be just beginning his tenure as mayor. Okay. One of the most significant issues in the agenda was to provide decent and affordable housing for the returning veterans of construction of new housing. Mm -hmm. Thus, Robert and Moses came into the picture. Virtual halt during World War II. Thus, Robert that, Moses came into the picture. That's right. Okay. Go ahead. And and resulting in an extremely tight housing market with the veterans of many who were in the 20s with their spouses and with their spouses and young children be able to find suitable place to live. Mm -hmm. The mayor convened an emergency committee on housing, which included luminaries, such luminaries as Borgia Butler and Robert Moses. Mm -hmm. This is called Temporary Veterans Emergency Housing. The which was a result of an effort of this committee. Mm -hmm. Speaking in one voice, the committee argued in case of press release and accompanied a proposal from New York State mm -hmm. to appropriate $50 million for temporary housing. Hold on. So you, said you said $50 million or 15 Five zero comma uh -huh. zero zero comma yep. zero zero zero. Gotcha. All right. Go ahead. Temporary housing, as we know, is not a solution. Mm -hmm. We reluctantly offer it as the only thing that can be done. And immediately to make sure that our returning veterans have something resembling a roof over their heads and to shelter them from the cold winter's cold. Mm -hmm. Within one year, veterans emergency housing was contracted, constructed, and ready for occupancy in 1947. Mm -hmm. 11 temporary veterans housing developments were in operation. Where were they located? If, uh, I'm sorry for All over the city. Okay. <coughs> All over New York City. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead. Four developments were state aided <coughs> with the remainder funding by the city, they were located in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. Okay. So, um, <coughs> NYCHA, as it is today. That's right. Being the fact, uh, the New York City Housing Authority, under, uh -huh. under Robert, Robert Moses, um, I mean, it was clean back then, right? Yeah. Um, so on and so forth. Um, however, during the tenements uh, sit situation of um, garbage and filth and everything else, um, in your opinion, would you say that NYCHA lives up to, uh, this is just your opinion, would you say that NYCHA lives up to Rob Robert Moses' name or could there be more changes? It could be more changes. Let, let's just leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else you want to say about Robert Moses? Because uh, I know that the Albert Einstein College of Medicine has um, uh, the buildings named after him. Um, Robert Moses um, uh, compound or, or buildings. Um, but it, now... Did the tenement buildings come after the buildings of the bridges or before? Before. Um, how so? How so? There's something called uh, How the Other Half Lives. Mm -hmm. Progressive labor in the slums. Okay. Well, the housing authority, they had to they clean, up the, clean up the slums. Or How the Other Half Lives by Jacob Rees. Okay. Oh, 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 okay, there's a book. So it's called How, How the Other Half Lives. That's right. Okay. 
So, um, let me ask you this question. The, all right, so in Manhattan, for example, there were slums. There was very deplorable conditions. Un, yes. On uh, un, uninhabitable conditions. Um, dirty conditions. So that is why Robert Moses created affordable housing, correct? Yeah. Do you know, uh, since you're taking history courses at City University of New York, do you know, uh, do you know if um, the, how, the, do you know how much a person's rent was back then being, so, so, so we're talking about 20s and, uh, 20s, because uh, the depression goes from what, 29 to 35 or something like that? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, so, do you know how much rent would have been in the 20s? No, but I suggest you uh, you look for further studies. Hold on, let's let's just double check that since I have you on the uh, uh, on that note. Um, so we're we're talking about housing, and we're talking about uh, the you know the way things were. So, okay. but what? Why was Robert Moses really concentrating on 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 uh, the on on housing and veterans. Was he a veteran himself? I don't know. I don't know whether he was or not, but he might have known people who were veterans. Okay. Okay. So so let's go in terms of um, housing in the 1920s and 30s in terms of Robert Moses. So, um, according, according to Google, um, uh-huh. housing... Uh, people were making, let's say, on on 85th Street, Manhattan, back in the 1920s, uh, 4,800 per year. Um, so, which means rent must have been a little bit less than about, say, 65 to 70 dollars a month, um, or maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but you know, don't forget, back in the 20s and 30s, you you had the Great Depression, and which you know people were homeless and, and so on and so forth. Um, you also had the yeah. You also had the prohibition. Yeah, that was another thing. Al Capone, prohibition, and everything else imaginable with uh, um, uh, uh, with that. Um, so let's now um, go to which is a very important era in history. We talk about housing and, and you know, Robert Moses, but let's talk about President Kennedy for a minute. Um, talk about, Remember, um, living in the 1920s and 30s, obviously a lot of people with special needs probably lived in institutions back then. Um, yeah. But talk about President Kennedy. <clears throat> October 24th, 1963, was a day in history that... Um, President Kennedy signed into law um, the mental Re- the mental retardation act of 1963 which um, which was part of the um, you know American 20th century uh, the reason why he signed that act was because of his uh, uh, of his sister Rose Kennedy being mentally retarded herself um, you know people don't use that name anymore but um, uh, he signed under the auspices of that act of the mental retardation of 1963. Um, he signed it at he signed it in conjunction with a whole bunch of dignitaries at, um, at the Association for Retarded Children. Um, he signed that act um, to give more. Uh, services for people who were mentally retarded. Basically, he was trying to, according to his words, he was trying to squash or put an end to mental retardation. Obviously, we cannot put an end to it, um, but we can only make it better through services. Now, 
in your opinion, um, do you think that services, now that we're in the 21st century, uh, do you think that services could, could be improved? Do you think President Kennedy did a wonderful thing by creating more ser services back then? Or do, yes. you, do you think um, services can, how do you think services can be improved? Um, you know, being the fact that we're in this horrible administration that we are in. Better jobs, more jobs, mm -hmm. meaningful jobs, better education. Okay. Uh, better, better employment. Mm -hmm. Better med medical uh, access to medical services. Mm -hmm. Because as of Ro uh, when Rose Kennedy was born, uh, she was basically shunned by not, not shunned by her family, but shunned by the community because they didn't really want to hear about mental retardation back then. Um, let me ask you this question. When you were growing up uh, with special education, um, did they basically shun people with special needs and in, in, in special ed back then when you were going to school? I knew, they were, I, knew I was different. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, but being the fact that we were in the 20th century and with all the changes, um, how, how, how do you think things, have, have things changed or have they gotten worse for people with disabilities now? They're trying, but, uh, not enough. Okay. Let me just read this real quick, uh, on the Mental Retardation Act of 1963. It says, oh, here we go. The Community Mental Help Act of 1963 was an act to provide federal funding for <clears throat> community mental health centers, research facilities in the United States. This legislation was passed by President Kennedy, oh, oh, hold on one second, let me backtrack. The Community yeah. Mental Health Act in 1963, CMHA, also known as Community Mental Health Centers Construction Act, Mental Retardation Facilities and Construction Act, Public Law 88-164 <clears throat> of the Mental Retardation and Community uh, Mental Health Centers Construction Act of 1963 was an act to provide federal funding for <clears throat> for people with mental health, uh, people in mental health centers and research facilities in the United States. This legislation was passed by John F. Kennedy's New Frontier, and um, and it led to the con con the considerable deinstitutionalization situation. Because obviously there was um, a lot of um, uh, the, there was a lot of people in institutions. In 1955, Congress passed. Hello, are you there? Yeah, here. Okay, Congress passed the Mental Health Study Act, leading to the uh, um, leading to the establishment of the Joint Commission of Mental Illness and Mental Health. Okay, and, and while we're talking, we're going to have pictures pop up. Um, this commission was issued to report in 1961, which became the basis of the 1963 Act. The CMHA provided grants, <clears throat> grants to states for the establishment of mental health centers under the overview of the National Institute for Mental Health. The NIH also constructed a study involving, in, uh, involving adequacy for mental health issues. The purpose <clears throat> of the CMHA was to hold mental health centers to provide <clears throat> the community-based care as an alternative to institutionalization at the center's at the centers, patients could be treated while working or living at home. 
Now, remember, um, in 1963, during the Willowbrook, well, um, Willowbrook in the 1960s, Robert F. Kennedy uh, visited Willowbrook, and he called it a snake pit. Um, uh, you know, I mean, this was crazy. That's why in, in the 1970s, Geraldo Rivera went over the wall with ABC to uncover this, um, you know, monstrosity of an institution. Uh, did, uh, go ahead. Did the state of Vermont have such a... Yes, the state of Vermont had Brandon State School. It got closed in 1993. Um, it, there was, um, it was like workshops, jobs, uh, um, but it also, it also it included people in horrible conditions. Um, it says only half of the proposed centers were ever built. None were fully funded, and the act didn't provide money to operate them long term. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and it also it also states deinstitutionalization accelerated after the adoption of the Medicaid Act in 1965. Medicaid is also having uh, um, problems during. During the Reagan administration, the remaining funding for the act converted into a uh, mental health block grant for states. Some of the CMHA was enacted. 90% of beds have been cut at state hospitals. Now, we talk about cuts in terms of, um, with, you know, I'm pretty sure that Robert Moses created some hospitals, or he helped um, with the building of um, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. But we, it, in the mental health situation, you have something called a crisis bed. What that basically states is that if you're having a mental health crisis, you go somewhere, you get well, they put you on a 72 to 80 hour hold, or, or in, in even some cases, they give you a place to stay for a while. That's what a crisis bed. Vermont is having problems. Uh, when, when, when we talk about Vermont, uh, Vermont now is having, and maybe you want to say something to, towards this, Vermont <clears throat> now is having uh, problems with the psychiatric center on, Bar on Barry Montpelier Road. Um, at, uh, you know, uh, either it's going to be sold or um, not be around for long. You know, um, in terms of crisis beds, you know, we really have a problem in the United States. Uh, I mean, Robert Moses only caused a certain amount of problem. He, he was trying to fix the solution, okay? Certain people, yeah. President Kennedy, um, Roosevelt, all these people were trying to fix a solution and make things better, okay? Look at the freedom of speech, okay? When we talk yeah. about freedom of speech, that's a problem right there. Freedom of speech. Congress shall make no changes to the First Amendment. Now look what's happening. People are trying to block the First Amendment. People are trying to... Um, um, put a put a a bad wrench into a car. You see my point? Or they're trying to put a they're trying to put a cog, you know, uh, um, how you say? You know, they they're trying to put a a a, a bad car together. It yeah. it won't happen. Um, Social Security and Medicaid. Well, Social Security was created in nineteen forties. Okay? Oh, it's 1930s. 1930s, early 40s. Okay? Yeah. Between, with Roosevelt. Medicaid yeah. Act, the Medicaid Act was created in 1965 to give people easier health insurance. You know how many problems Medicaid has these days? In terms, in terms of commentary, you know how many problems Medicaid has these days? 
Um, why should people be on the phone with Medicaid and Social Security for an hour or so? It's just, it's, people with special needs should not ever, ever struggle. We still have struggles. Okay? Why should, yeah. my, why should my wife and other people who have Medicaid, why should my wife turn around and, and wait on the phone for Medicaid for an hour? And then only to be yelled at and screamed at by the Medicaid um, customer service representative. It makes no sense. It, it, there should be an easier way of doing things. Do you have any, anything to add to the way things are now? The system has to be reworked. We, we, we worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get back to um, President Kennedy. Um, thus, because of his work, um, CUNY has a big chunk of um, President Kennedy's legacy. The John F. Kennedy Jr. Institute for Worker Education uh, which is down on Wall Street, uh, which is a uh, um, part of the City University of New York, and also part of the research. Um, the research foundation is the um, John F. Kennedy Jr. Institute for Worker Education, uh, which I was um, part of. You know, training students when I was in New York, um, and um, which gave. Uh, students and interns a chance to learn job skills. Um, it, you know, the, the John F. Kennedy uh, Center for the Arts and, um, um, is, is uh, part of that, um, so on and so forth. So um, basically, if it wasn't for certain people, you wouldn't have what you have today. Um, in terms of uh, Robert Moses, is there anything else as far as buildings that Robert Moses created that, that was really I important? I suppose so. I, I just don't know about it. Okay. N not a problem. Um, hold on a sec. Uh, John F. Kennedy Institute for Worker Education. So let's, so let's go into that. Um, the John F. Kennedy Institute for Worker Education is part of... Um, City University of New York, um, which is part of the CUNY School for Professional Studies. Um, there is a nonprofit arm founded by John F. Kennedy Jr., um, which joined the City University of New York, which um, I was extremely part of. Um, the John F. Kennedy Jr. for Institute for Work of Education. This is a private partnership um, that serves the vehicle <clears throat> that uh, carried John F. Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy Jr.'s work in support of the higher education and career advancement of um, uh, health and human services occupations, as well as people with disabilities. Um, so it, gave, it gives people with special needs jobs, and it gives them uh, college, college education. And also, there, um, there's a situation called the, there's a, a program called the CUNY Connection, which is part of John F. Kennedy. Um, as John F. Kennedy uh, stated, it's, it's known as the CUNY Connection. Um, and, you know, John F. Kennedy did a lot of work, especially um, when it came to the Special Olympics, which is, was really important yeah. with Eunice Kennedy Shriver, giving um, people with intellectual disabilities, um, mental retardation and so on, a, a chance to do recreational um, activities, um, you know, Special Olympic sports, and so on. There's, there's a lot of Special Olympic sports, including weightlifting, tennis, um, bowling, and so on and so forth. Even cooking and culinary, because they've they've done cul uh, culinary competitions. So, um, to recap, let's uh, talk about w what we spoke about today, which is um, 
uh, Robert Moses and the Housing Authority. Um, now, just to recap, why was it a blunder, in your opinion, with the Bronx Expressway and uh, so on and so forth? Why do you think it was a blunder when he was trying to help um, with uh, uh, congestion with cars and buses and so on? He, uh, he, er he eradicated, he demolished neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Call the, uh, uh, the, call the... Go ahead, take your time, me. take your time. The, uh, she, Go ahead. Call it the, the uh, the need, the need for, for no, uh, in other words, if they're going to be putting a, uh, a bridge, a, a bridge or, or roads through your area, Mm -hmm. and they have to take over public condemnation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what you're saying is people didn't want it at first? No. Okay. But being on the fact that there was so much congestion... Rule of eminent domain. What was that? Rule of eminent domain. Okay. But, being, but, but my point being is this. Being on the fact that it... Um, that it was becoming congestion or congested, okay? Yeah. Um, be, being the fact that it was becoming congested, I mean, wouldn't it have helped with the congestion, uh, you know, to make it easier? I mean, the Cross Bronx Expressway, for God's sakes, um, is always having problems with people waiting, <laughs> you know? Traffic jams. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can see huge traffic jams there, but because um, I used to live near that area. But um, I mean, I see your point there. But in, in terms of, you know, it, I mean, it was making money with tolls and bridges and so on and so forth, you know, um, and, and giving people jobs at, at, at certain points, you know, because construction jobs, when you give somebody a job, it's a job, you know. But uh, I see your point there. Um, is there anywhere that people can turn to if they want to find out more about uh, the New York City Housing Authority, Robert Moses, or any anything in relation to that? Sure. Call the Housing Authority and, uh, and ask them. The Housing Authority Public Information Officer. Okay. No, but is there, like, I know that LaGuardia like, Community College has... Um, uh, are the archives. Yeah. So, okay, uh, since we said that. that, that it, that's a good place to start off at. Okay, yes. Um, okay, since we said that, for those that want to find out more of um, the work of Robert Moses, New York City Housing Authority, uh, or anything that Robert Moses uh, did in the 20th century, you can go to www.cuny.com. Dot edu, um, which is uh, the City University of New York, and uh, log on to La uh, LaGuardia Community College's um, archive. Um, I'm a alumni of LaGuardia Community College, um, part of City University of New York. And um, for those that want to find out more about John F. Kennedy Jr.'s uh, work, you can go to YouTube um, and look at, as a matter of fact, we're going to run as part of this program, um, some, we might um, change uh, the time of this program because we want to um, run some of the um, inaugural addresses of John F. Kennedy as well as the, um, the um, Mental Retardation Act and the, you know, you know, um, uh, Mental Health Act of 1963. Uh, and also, if you would like to find out more about John F. Kennedy, you can go to the library and archives of John F. Kennedy, uh, President John F. Kennedy, which we will pop the um, website up on the screen for that. 
Um, we would like to thank our sponsors and thank um, John, uh, thank uh, Andrew Burson. I was gonna say John Kennedy, but he's no longer around. Well, I mean, I mean, we thank him for his work, but also uh, we would like to thank Andrew Burson for joining us on today's edition of Able Then On Air. And that's all, folks. Um, hold on, Andy. Uh, and yep. we would also like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health and uh, Green Mountain Support Services, as well as many other sponsors. And here's a piece of information. Orca Media, as of March, will no longer be on channel 15, 16, and 17. We are moving to um, channel 1075, 85, and 95. Um, for more information on that, um, you can go <clears throat> to uh, the Times Argus article, the most recent article, time, uh, that's www.timesargus.com, uh, and um, you can look up information why Orca Media is moving to um, the, um, the Vermont College of Fine Arts. Uh, it's gonna be a bigger space, bigger shows, bigger opportunities. So uh, for more information on that, go to www.timesargus.com. Um, as of April 17th, uh, we will no longer be on channel 15. Again, we will be able to on air and other programs will be on, uh, on uh, channel 1075, 85, and 95. And um, you can always uh, log on to www orcamedia.net um, and um, we, again we would like to thank our um, sponsors Washington County Mental Health and Green Mountain Support Services and other sponsors um, Arlene is not here today uh, tune in for um, other exciting editions of Able Done On Air uh, to come in March which will be Washington County Mental Health we will be discussing uh, ambulances and autism and also we will be talking about uh, Disability Awareness Day which will be at the State House on March 12th and other um, exciting episodes. Again, I, my name is Lawrence Seiler um, and this has been another edition of Able Done On Air. See you next time. Sponsors for Able Good On Air are Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, Allah Israel. Additional sponsors include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Able Good On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, Associated Press Media Editors. U.S. Press Corps, domestic and international.